Alright, this is Marvel Tales featuring Ravenclaw. This comes from Marvel's more expensive line of reprints of Arda material. On one hand, I kind of like the overall idea, but in execution, I think they are not really using these Marvel Tales books for anything special. The issues reprinted are practically random and the books exist solely as another excuse to try and squeeze money out of readers for some odd comics. It really says something that Marvel currently, they have got three different reprint lines out there. They've got the True Believers line, they've got Marvel Tales and then they've got the facsimile ones. The thing is, they are cheap and easy to make, and then with stuff like this with a ridiculous price point, they only stand to make a profit. The other thing is, realistically, when you look at it, what you've got here is really just a highly priced dumping ground for advertisements for trade paperbacks. There's also minimal consideration or editing going into these as you'll see this one it collects three different issues and it is emblematic of exactly what i hate about this entire idea first up we have got spectator spider-man 178 a fantastic issue by jim tomatas and john buscema this is the first part of a story called The Child Within and it focuses on Vermin Man from Spider-Man's Last Un. It's a really great issue, the whole story is and it's great to see this one because Marvel in their infinite wisdom they have never reprinted this story. This genuinely brilliant Spider-Man story that consistently ranks as one of the best spider-man stories ever told they've never bothered to reprint it the theme that links these comics together is they all involve ravenclaw ravenclaw was the loony bin that was created in the 90s and it was mostly in spider-man books this issue it is the first appearance of enid ravenclaw the head doctor shrink psychiatrist person. Uh, she was in the 90s cartoon quite a bit as well. What we've got here is an exploration of Vermin Man's tortured psych and Spider-Man and Dr. Ravenclaw. Their contrasting views on how responsible Vermin Man is for his actions. We've got a subplot with Larry Osborn and this is what the story is far more remembered for. Larry Osborn, he succumbs to the same madness that his father, Norman Osborn, fell to. Really great issue, this one. Strongly recommend. Great art by John Buscema. He did some amazing sequential stuff in this run. Some really interesting grid layouts. I remember one where it's like, it's like a 20 panel grid. What's annoying here though is Marvel, they have given people part one of a six part story at an inflated price and at least the other two stories in here, at the end of them it has got like an advert saying go get so and so the collected edition to read the rest of this story and it really pisses us off that they've included part one of a story that they have no intention to ever reprint. They just expect you to go and track the rest down yourself if you liked it. Or like the editors of the book, just not care enough to ever want to read the next five parts. Then we have got Spider-Man Limitless number one. This is the first part of the Maximo Carnag crossover. It's written by Tom the Falcon with art by Ron Lee. That's Stanley Lee's little brother. And this is another great issue. It is the first, I think, it is the first full appearance of Ravenclaw as an institute. And not only is this one a great vehicle for Ron Lee to do some great art, 
but it's only Karnak's second story ever. So seeing him in action is really fun. And here is a massive spoiler for how the Spectator Spider-Man story ends. They are all at Larry Osborne's funeral. Very clear that little care or interest went into putting together this book priced at 8 quid. This one is also the first appearance of Sharif. She comes on to be a modestly important Spider-Man villain. Though... <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I saw Marvel, they recently brought her back and they made her into a female version of Demon Gobbler. Fucking awful. Fucking sexy Mary James though and sexy women all around. This is another comic that I would recommend. Maximo Karnag, I might do a whole video about it. There are some bits that are brilliant and then some bits that are shit. Uh, we have got Double Ganger 2 from the Infinity Worlds. Uh, I think this issue, it's a bit longer than your average comic. Spider-Man Limitless, the idea was that it was more pages and higher quality paper. And it was released quarterly instead of monthly. Definitely recommend this first issue of Maximo Karnag. We got Great Art by Ron Lee. Fun story by Tom the Falcon. And we end with Karnag on a desk. And this image here of Karnag was one of my first ever avatars on the internet. And there you can see it says continued in Spider-Man Maximo Karnag. It's just an advert for the trade. So far both of these stories have been great and they have fit the theme of being about Ravenclaw. And now we are on to a modern comic, Spider-Man 798 by Dan Slott. And this one is not only terrible, but it has absolutely no to do with Ravenclaw. At all. It's not mentioned, it doesn't even feature like characters from the previous two stories. No, this is just Marvel doing what they always do. They are propping up shite by aligning it with gold. This really has no place in this expensive reprint package. You can probably still find copies of this piece of shit in some fucking comic book shops. It really fucking aggravates us in every way. It's again indicative of how little care or consideration they really put into these disgusting expensive products. Under the comic itself, it's, it's terrible. I tried to read it and Dan Slott, I have been praising his Avengers run. His Avengers run is really good, but that is it for him. This is, this is dreadful. He has such a bad grasp on Peter Parker and Spider-Man. And he is so uninterested in the title character that he instead ends up writing up everyone else and making Spider-Man into a passive background character who contributes nothing but annoying effeminate jokes and this is a real struggle we do get to see spider-man do some stuff but it's mostly he loses a fight well actually no he starts a fight and then we immediately cut away to anyone else all these boring people that are not spider-man who Dan Slot overwrites and has no fucking idea what he is doing. I mean, right, fuck, fucking hell. Look, look at that, right. This is like a good reflection of Dan Slot's Spider Man in general, right? Look, Spider Man, let's go back, right? Look, Spider Man, he gans into action. He finally punches his arch enemy. Cut away to someone else. Then cut away to someone else. Then keep with these someone else's for four pages. And then we're back to the fight. And Spider-Man's already getting beaten. I do not recommend this. I do not recommend this overall comic. Even though you get two great stories. This one is so bad that it negates all their strengths. Go and get the original issues. You can probably... Probably fucking get a pair of them, cheaper than paying eight quid, and getting saddled with this terror. 
And then Dan Slot, out of ideas at the end of his run, desperate to gun out with a bang. Well, he just slaps the Cornag symbiote on the Norman Osball. Fucking... Fucking embarrassing. Then Red Gobbler, that's the uninventive name that he's given to this uninventive idea. Red Gobbler, he kicks Spider-Man's arse some more. Nice art, but that was true of most of this run, and just say no. And they put that fucking shit on the cover. It's got no today with Ravenclaw. If you honestly think Norman Osborn getting the Cornag symbiote is cool, go and bang your head against a wall over and over again until you can be medically diagnosed with the brain damage that you clearly already have. This is two brilliant stories, and then one so bad it makes the brilliant ones shit. And to top it all off, the shittest story in the book has nothing to do with the theme of this sampler. In every way, that story did not belong in here, subjectively and objectively. Jesus, I, I didn't recommend this. It's really thick as well, so tearing it up's hard. Well, I tear off the cover and I'll get rid of the shitty dance slot bit. There we go. Much better. Just avoid all that rubbish shite. Fucking stay away from it. Fucking click off this video. Just stay as far away from that as you can. I'm going to rate this a whole seven thumbs up. As you saw, it was quite hard to tear this up because it was thick and I am weak. And the result is, I just tore out the story, but I didn't actually tear it up. So here we go. This is just an advert, but still getting it. There we go, all destroyed. Let's get all the all the mess on camera. Oh, that looks a bit big. That needs to go. Look, oh, there's. There's a feminine hipster Peter Parker. Garbage. So now this is pretty good. It's got um, two really great stories in and sadly, can't get rid of this, this cover because it's uh, on the back of that page. But about 99% of this is good now. That's a that's a decent improvement.